Hey, what's up? This is Hyunsuk again, and welcome to another Numerous Model Builder tutorial. In this chapter, we're going to get started on making spatial models. Uh, things are going to ramp up a little now, and we're going to see fairly more advanced and features in Numerous. And in this video, we're going to learn how to make a hierarchical model. A uh, hierarchical model is basically when a set of models or submodels are nested within another larger, more comprehensive model. So let's take a look at some examples of these hierarchical models. All right, first, take a look at this machine for an example. Uh, this is some kind of solar heating system uh, that I have absolutely no idea how it works. But if you take a look at it, you can tell that there are like a bunch of little different parts that work independently to make the whole machine functional and useful. So you can see this whole machine as a one large parent model, and these little components are submodels that independently work, but also calculates for the parent model. And this is a concept of hierarchical modeling. All right, and let's check out another example. So here's an. I'm gonna open something. All right, so here's an age structured fish population in Numerus, and here, each of these capsules, which we'll go over in a sec, um, are submodels of each age class, and this is a parent model of all the sub submodels we have here, and these little blue icons are the object for the submodels that are called that are called chips. And don't worry too much about the little details in this model right now because um, we'll go over what all these little components are. But yeah, so now we're going to make a very elementary hierarchical model consisting of logistic population growth. And in fact, this demo is going to be so like simple that it's not even necessary to make it into a hierarchical model, but we'll do it anyways just to learn how to make it. All right, so... Let's get started with a new page in Numerus. And all right, let's get started with making a simple stuff. So this is going to be the population. This is all the same thing we've seen. Uh, we're going to make term for R, parameter K. Flow is going to be DX. So it's good to practice practice repetition doing this because you get better at it. So we'll make this r times x times 1 minus x over k. Alright, now... Alright, so we made this model, right? <coughs> now we go to capsules and let's make, let's put this name as logistic. So what we're going to do here now is, this is a capsule. So capsule, you can think of it as like a unit of a model. So it's a unit. And we're going to make a new capsule. And this is going to be our parent model. So let's name it parent. And in order to nest this logistic population growth model into a parent model, we need to drag this into the parent canvas. And then it creates this chip, which is a representation of the submodel logistic. So let's call this logistic. And now we have a chip. And one thing I didn't mention here is now we have to, we need some way for these two models to communicate to each other. And that we're gonna do by creating in pins and out pins. So we're gonna make R an in pin and we're gonna create another term. Uh, let's call it X out. And we're going to connect it to X. And we're going to make this an out pin. So what in pins and out pins are, it allows for the parent model to give inputs into the submodels. And it allows the submodels to give outputs to the parent model. So now we have made in pins and out pins, we go back to the parent model and we see this little two sticks sticking out of the logistic chip. So the left one, if we hover over the pin a little long, it, it tells you this is the R in pin. And if you hover, hover over this one, it tells you that this is X out. So 
any impins that you put in in the um, cap submodel is gonna be on the left, and any outpins you put in the submodel are is, is are gonna be on the right. All right. So in the pair model, now we're gonna be able to give inputs of R in the submodel, and then we're gonna the pair model is gonna be able to receive the output that the logistic population growth can give. All right. So what we're gonna do here now is. We're gonna create a slider and call it r slider r slash r dash slider. Let's make this maximum value one, step zero point one, and initial value zero point three. And what we're gonna do here is, like you when you add it on the graph, when you like when you add components on the graph, you're gonna click this, and you're gonna right click on the r slider, and now the r in pin in the capsule is now going to be connected to the R slider in the parent model. So any adjustments here is going to make adjustments in the logistic population growth model. And now the output, x, now the x output is going to be the population itself over time. And we want that to be represented in the graph. We're going to name this graph x. And then we're going to add the output. So we're going to right click on it and then it adds the output. All right, so when you click on this, all the list here is gonna be the, all the impins and then you can connect it to whatever you want on the parent model. And now let's change the clock setting a little bit. Uh, it's a continuous model. And we launch and we see same thing we've seen, we've been seeing. Then if we launch, we run. Oh, all right, so we made a mistake. Um, yep, I think I know what we did wrong. We didn't specify the K value, which is going to be 500. So we're going to make, when you do this, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, inevitably, because it's just the nature of programming. But you shouldn't be ashamed of it, and you should embrace it and learn from the mistakes, as with anything, you know? All right, now let's try it again. All right, see? <clears throat> makes the logistic population growth model from the parent model. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we learned about the concept of hierarchical model today and how to construct it in Nova. So the basic steps are you want to create a capsule, uh, put inpins and output outpins in the submodels, and create a top level model, the top level capsule, and then drag the sub model capsule onto the main model creating a chip. Then you can connect the chips to other components on the parent model. All right, now in the next tutorial, uh, we're gonna learn how to put some codes in the numerus to allow us to control the models in numerus in a more sophisticated way. So tune in for the next one and see you next time.